What's going on guys, VigVP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna go in depth on RetroArch, the actual configuration for buttons, and how do we add ROMs if we wanna add ROMs. All right guys, let's go right into it. So real quick, just again, to show you the button combo. Again, you do this on any game, do not do it on the tinfoil app. You're gonna hold down R1, and launch on any game you want. Keeping R1 pressed, you get the back end loaded. And we're gonna go and launch RetroArch. RetroArch's gonna load, depending on how you have your menu set up. I have it set to XMB. I love the way it looks, because it looks like a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And basically, we get right on into it. So, cool thing with RetroArch is that you do have an area here for history, your most recently played games. So instead of you searching or looking for the game, you do have, I think this holds up to 20 games here, so you could quickly access your history of games. You do have a nice feature here, which is Explore, where you could actually search a game. We're gonna look into that. But after that, you do have all your consoles. At the bottom right, you could see how many games. So again, on my personal one, I have the Ataris. I have three arcade folders, basically hitting about 2,000 games. I have my Game Boys. Then I have my consoles. So Super Nintendo and such, and Sega. So it's about 15 consoles I have. You could add more if you wanted to. You basically do it by load and loading cores and all that and adding ROMs. But this right here to me is perfect. I think that's more than enough plentiful than what I would honestly play. And not to mention that these are consoles that I know I've personally played with and I've enjoyed. So I don't need anything else. They do have, you know, Wonder Swan. I could put Virtual Boy, but Virtual Boy games didn't really intrigue me too much. But basically, that is your main kind of menu overview. So I'm gonna kind of start off with really talking about the arcade side of things. Uh, people will be clicking on this video also to figure out and understand or copy my best retro arc button inputs that I have so that you could basically play arcade games super easy while using the Joy-Cons. So again, I personally have three different, for some reason, the core and the database separated into three. I had the MAME 2003 ROM pack and not all the games went through, but a good 2000 of them went. I'm probably missing about 20 of them. One of them being Simpsons two player. I have the ROM, but for some reason, the, debate, the database will not allow it for some reason to, to be there. Um, so. To make things easy, let's look up a fighting game just to kind of show it off. You could come here again, you could do search name. And I'm just gonna look up Marvel because I've been honestly shooting that video with Marvel for a while. Or actually, yeah, we'll do Marvel. We'll just keep it Marvel. So Marvel VS. And I press search and we got Marvel versus Capcom. Awesome. When we're ready, you press A and you run it. So I'm gonna show you first how mine is configured and set up, and then I will then teach you how to have it set. Big thing basically is that I have my start and select on one button, which is the plus. As you can see, MAME is gonna load up. So I have start and select. So in the arcade emulator, select is coin. The way I have this set up, it might interfere with other games, and I'm gonna show you how to make them work, but Majority of them, I would say about 90% of the games work flawlessly with this layout. I've ran into a handful that don't. It's mostly when it comes to Super Nintendo. So I'm gonna first show you first one player. As you can see, I'm gonna press one more time. It This game specifically needs two quarters, so it put the two quarters in and it pressed start, because again, I have this as select and start. Right now, as you can see, I have the analog and the D-pad. I can control player one, and I'm using red Joy-Con here to select, okay? I'm gonna just do easy, doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna really fight. But right now we are enjoying arcade awesomeness on this device, okay? I'm just gonna do a couple buttons. I have L1 and R1 mapped out to punches and kicks and all that. So again, this is a six button arcade game. So you have four and then the two here, okay? Now, this is the craziest thing. This is the most coolest thing about this is that if I remove the Joy-Con, so I got one here and I do the other one here, I'm gonna push this back a little bit. If I remove the Joy-Con and I take this red one, which is player two, and if I press start, 
two times, so I insert another quarter. I now have two player action, and I did not have to change anything as far as button configurations or anything like that. So with the Joy-Con separated, you still have six buttons. You have your four, and you got two on the top. So this is six button action. As you can see, controlling player one, controlling player two, kicks, again, the buttons up top work. Awesomeness, this is, a, this is amazing. This to me, when I discovered this, I was like, wow, this is perfect. The only thing is that the stock RetroArch setup, it won't work out of the box. You will have to do a couple of modifications to it. So as you can see, I'm able to play two players now. If I'm on an airplane, that's you know just amazing. The other cool thing is if I connect this back, takes away player two, and now I'm back to one player action. So playing consoles like Super Nintendo, NES, you wanna play two players and then go back to one player, as you can see, I didn't do any configurations whatsoever, okay? Now, people that are looking at it, let's go through before I show you the button configuration. The one last thing I changed is how to bring up the menu. And again, I'm gonna show you the configuration, but I basically have the menu set up to start, select, L1 and R1. So it's really a four button press. But remember, I have start and select mapped here. So all I have to do is hit one, two, three at the same time. Once I press those three together, I now have the RetroArch menu. I can now close the game, or if you are experiencing an issue with start and select, which I will show you, you could then change your configurations here as well, okay? So I think the best thing to do with this video right now is to show you guys the actual button configuration. So just to be safe, we're gonna close the content just to make our life easy. This way we don't have a game in the background. Let me show you guys the button configuration. So on the main RetroArch menu, you're gonna go here to the settings. Whoops, sorry, touch screen. You're gonna go to settings. You're gonna go to input. I'm gonna show you what I changed first and then I'll explain everything later on. First thing I did is I went to hotkeys and I changed again this, this menu toggle controller combo. This brings up the menu. This really is set to start and select. I have it set to this one, the L1, R1, start and select. Why did I do that? Because if I do two player Joy-Cons, I now lose a button for start or select, depending how you have it mapped out. I can't go into the menu unless I connect my Joy-Con and go back to one player. Now, in all honesty, if you were like me, you might have your, 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 your device on the dock and now it's like, how do I, you know, you can't, you can't press start and select. Usually it's minus and plus for start and select. You can't do that. That is why I set up the menu toggle like that. So even though that it's disconnected, I could still do start select L1 R1. That is exactly why I did that. As you can see me, dis me disconnecting the Joy-Con, I now have to turn it and it goes up and down. If I keep it like this, this is really left and this is really up. So I'm gonna put this back so I don't confuse anybody. But that is the reason why I changed the menu toggle. That is number one. You could do like what I normally do with my arcade builds and I set up a hotkey and you could set up a menu key, I guess there is. Yeah, there's a menu toggle. I didn't wanna do that, it gets kinda of complicated. I didn't wanna do that. For reference, I do have hotkey set to minus. And just like my arcade builds, I have L1 set to load and R1 set to save. So while you're playing the game, let's say you're playing an arcade game and you gotta go eat, you hold down minus, that's your hotkey, and you press R1 to save. Go eat, replay your game, hit L1 to load it. So again, hotkey L1. That is the only thing I changed here. That was it. I'm gonna go back now, and these are the main things you had to do next. This split Joy-Con 1 is gonna be off. You're gonna to wanna to turn that on. And also turn on split Joy-Con 2. I originally had it just for split Joy-Con 1 on. Kinda of spazzed out. So far I've been doing great with both 1 and 2 on. That basically was already built into RetroArch. That basically once you disconnect the, the, the Joy-Cons from the, the deck, it then turns it into two players. So that is that. The last thing I'm gonna show you is to do player one and player two controls. Only a hand, only a little thing to do. Go into player one, 
This should automatically be on now because you turned it on in the last menu. But the only thing I personally changed is the select and the start button. Okay, you could do this either undocked or docked. I would probably suggest right now just to be safe, remove both of your Joy-Cons. This way you have it and it's correct. But either way, the number is gonna be right. So I'm gonna put start and select to this minus button. So I'm gonna select and then minus. I'm gonna go down to select and then minus. So as you can see, I have select and start as the same button. In reality, that button 10 is also the start button on docked mode, one player mode. So that's why I did that. If I go back, we're gonna go now to player two. This is why you wanna definitely separate the Joy-Cons. You're gonna wanna go down and you're gonna wanna assign the D-pad up, down, left, right. It wasn't mapped to the joystick. So you're gonna basically come here, you take player one, you're gonna go to d-pad up so you press enter on player one and up on that you're going to go down with player one you're going to do enter and you're going to go down on that so you have to use player one to go to the choice and then use player two to assign okay the last thing i changed again same thing is start and select that is the plus sign so if i do select here i get 10 it's number 10 number 10 is a sweet number that is it I could go back, I could go back, and now basically I am perfectly set for arcade emulation definitely and all other emulation. So doing that setting, you should be good to go. I will then again relaunch Marvel vs. Capcom just to show you guys. Again, I always have this as start and select. As you can see, while this is docked, this is button 10, and it worked in the other menu, as you can see, and undocked, these are button 10. So it works out either way. It is awesome, it is good to go. So as you can see, I have my volume low, but I have my one player control. If I remove the docks, you should also have your two player control. There you go, okay? Your big thing is that when you do this, you wanna make sure your analog stick works. When I did it originally, I didn't change the inputs for up, down, left, right. This didn't work until I changed the input, so you, you will have to do that, okay? Now, real quick, just to show you, actually, I'm gonna show you with it undocked. Now, the biggest reason why I have the hotkey menu for start, select, L1 and R1 is because even with two-player mode, I am able to access the menu. So, again, like me, I have my Switch you know, docked to a TV, I, I, I don't have it actually connected. So it's technically into player mode at all times. I don't really know about the wireless controller adapter thing, that controller thing, but basically whether you have it in your hands or if you have it separated like this, no matter what, you always have L1 and you always have access to your start and select. So as you could see, with two player undocked mode, I'm able to go into the menu. I'm gonna resume. And obviously if I am docked, my start, select L1 or R1, I'm able to go into the menu. So either way it works out. So the reason again why I did that is because let's say you're on the plane and you guys are tired of playing some fighting games. Instead of saying, hey, give me your controller, I would rather you just do that and then close your content and pick a different game. So that honestly is the biggest advantage. That is why I like it. On another side note though, some games really with the NES or the Super Nintendo, you might get a slight conflict because this is start and select. I have a friend of mine, a buddy of mine that has a Switch that, and we discovered, and I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, it was titled, I'm gonna go into the search function real quick. And I'm gonna look up the word Hudson. I'm gonna just show it to you now because I'd rather show it to you. This is something that is possibly, it could happen. So it's not flawless, but it's like a 5% chance that this would happen. He launched this, Hudson's Adventure Island. I'm gonna run this real quick. We have our settings changed like we did. I didn't change anything. We still have start and select here. But real quick, as you could see, I cannot play this game. I can't play it. 
That is because, again, this specific game, it doesn't happen on all the games, but for some reason, it, with it being like start and select, it's like blocking it from going to the next screen. So what do we do? Again, I am docked right now. So start and select is a one button press here and then L1, R1. So I'm gonna do that to activate our menu, correct? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press B, okay? I always like to go here where this quick menu is. I'm gonna go right to the settings. I'm gonna go down to the input. Oops, I passed it, I'm sorry. Down to input. A is to enter. And I'm gonna go to my port one controls and I'm gonna just change my select back to the minus sign. Okay, so now I have select here and start here. So now I technically have four buttons I have to press to get back to this menu. I'm good here, I'm gonna press B, I'm gonna press B. I'm gonna go back to left quick menu and I'm gonna resume. If I press start now, I'm able to play the game. The only big thing with this though is now you have select and start separated. So if you try to play an arcade game, docked like this, it will work because you have coin and select here. Coin and start, I should say. If you do remove the Joy-Cons, you now don't have start for player one and you don't have a coin for player two. So just keep that in mind. So the biggest thing as you can see right now, I was able to start this game. I'll go back into the menu. I'll go back and then I would just change my input on player one, the select key back to the plus. This way now it is 10 and 10. So again, I did notice it happen on a couple of NES games. Not a lot, nothing major, but it is definitely something to think about. I was paused and as you can see now, I'm able to play. Again, it's just that menu. Some NES, SNES games, you have to press either select or start to start. So just keep in mind, that is the one kind of flaw that I did find with my configuration like that. Now, the only one quick note um, my buddy recognized and realized is that if you're in RetroArch and you press the home button, you went back and you're like in the, the, the main menu here. If you go back into the game, you are now RetroArch paused and nothing will work or continue it unless you bring up the menu and then press resume. So just keep in mind that could happen. I'm very sure if you wanna play around with it, I'm, I'm pretty sure you go into your hotkey and there's probably a thing for pause, but I've been telling my friends, listen, you understand how to get into menu, just do the menu and then resume and that's it. Now you're back to playing. So again, if you hit the home button, you go back, you are retro arc pause, nothing works unless you menu it and resume it. Again though, for me, I have my one button start and select. So me pressing this doesn't really do much. But honestly, that is retro arc right there. That is my most recommended, the best retro arc button configuration I could think of. And so far it's been great. Again, especially going from one player to two player.